Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here and welcome to my channel. So in this channel, we solve a lot of legal questions and if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button under this video. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and look at today's question. We're looking at the question validated by a research sheet. So first of all, let's go ahead and understand the question. So we're given a search tree here and our purpose is to uh, determine if this tree is a valid binary search tree or not. So the first thing we need to understand is what is a valid uh, binary search tree? And trust me, like I did not fully understand this question before trying to solve it. And that really caused me a lot of issues because I didn't understand exactly these three rules that have been outlined here. So we will go through some examples to ensure that we fully understand what it means to be a valid binary search tree. Awesome, so let's review the three role, rules that we need to understand in order to determine if something is a valid BST or not. So in order to, to be a valid BST, the left subtree, so the left side, needs to have nodes that are less than the root node. So here we can see that, yes, one is less than two, so this condition applies. Now the second condition is the right subtree um, needs to have nodes that are greater than the roots nodes. So here we have two and we can see that three is greater than two. So this is a very simple example that confirms that yes, this is indeed a valid binary search tree. However, if we look at this example, we can see that, okay, the root is five and the left um, node is 1, which is fine because the left node is lower. However, the right node is 4. So therefore, this is not a valid binary search tree. Okay, so we have another example here and we can see that from the left side, um, 7 is lower than 8, so this condition is met, and 15 is greater than 8, so this condition is met. Um, however, if we look here, we can see that um, on the left of 7, we can see that, okay, 6 is less than 7, that is true. However, on this side, there's a 5 here. And what this means is that we have a subtree over here that does not meet the condition of what a valid binary search tree should be. So for each of the nodes, their own left and right children also need to be um, binary search tree. So if we look at this individual node by itself, it does not satisfy the condition of being a valid binary search tree because 5 over here is less than 7. And for each node, we need to ensure that the left side is less than the current node and the right side is more than the current node. So this is what the third point is talking about. So both the left and right subtrees must also be binary search trees. I'm going to go through another example so it's very clear what the requirements for the subtrees are. So here we can see that we have a node 8 and we have a um, left node here that is 7. So this is correct, like this is fine that the left side is lower. And then from this subtree's perspective, we can see that, okay, the left side is lower here, this is six, and then the right side is higher here. So nine is greater than seven. So from this subtree's perspective, this makes sense. It is a valid um, BST. So we can see here that this is seven, the seven, seven is greater than six, and seven is lower than nine. So this side is less and this side is greater. However, this is not a valid binary search tree. And this is another concept I didn't understand about the problem. So in the problem, you need to ensure that the entire subtree, so the entire left subtree has to be lower than its root key. So over here, um, nine is not greater, nine is not less than eight. So this is the left subtree left subtree and this is the right subtree so we need to make sure that within the children the entire uh, values of the subtree is lo lower than its root so 
This is another concept we need to keep in mind when we're thinking about solving this problem. On the right side, we can see that the conditions are met, that yes, okay, 15 is greater than 8, 14 is greater than 8, and 16 is greater than 8. However, all the values here are not less than 8 on the left subtree. So from the subtree perspective, we not only have to verify, one, that the subtree has less values on its um, left side and then higher values on its right side, we also need to make sure that holistically, from the whole tree perspective, um, the entire left, entire left subtree, all the values here are less than its root, and all the values on the right, on the, from the perspective of the entire subtree, all the values here are greater. So this is another condition that is not very like clearly mentioned in the question with examples but we do need this condition to be met for our solution to work. Awesome, now that we understand the problem, uh, what are the things that we need to um, send to this function to sort of solve this issue? So let's brainstorm some of the ideas that we have realized um, by understanding what a BST stands for. So the number one idea, the number one thing that we need to keep in mind is that we need to make sure that the left child is less than um, our node and we need to make sure that the right child is greater than the current node we are on. Okay, so when we look at this from a single node perspective, it becomes easier to understand and solve. So what this tells us is that we need to have some sort of upper and lower bound when we are determining each um, of the nodes. So we can call this, we can have a lower bound called minval. So we need to check against this value and make sure that the node we are on is greater than this min value. So we need to make sure it's greater than this min value. And then we need to have another variable to store the upper bound, and we can call this maxval. And we need to make sure that the node we're on is less than our maxval. So we have derived these two conditions from our observations of this problem so far. To start off with, when we're looking at um, the initial node, we also need to compare this to something. So we can set a negative inf and a positive inf as the lower and upper bounds just to like get started and have those initial um, thresholds in place. The next observation to make is that since we are doing the same thing at each node, it is a good idea to use recursion to solve this problem just to make um, the solution more simpler. So from the perspective of each node, we are comparing if the min value and the max value requirements are met, and if they are, then we can go ahead and return true. Okay, what I've done here is I have created these min and max variables for each of these um, nodes, and we're going to fill these out so it becomes clear how these values are being set and evaluated. So on our left here, we have a seven, and First of all, the min and max are initialized as negative inf and positive inf. Um, so when we are at seven, our min value is still negative inf, and we are comparing this to our max value, which is eight. So what we need to determine is, is seven less than eight? And this is true, so this is correct. Um, similarly, when we are at six, we need to make sure that our min and max values are evaluated. So again, our min value is negative int because we do not need to change this, um, we do not need to change this variable. So anything less than um, eight, which is, you know, negative int is the lowest threshold for that is fine. So we can just say, okay, the value here is negative int for our lower bound However, we do need to set our upper bound here. 
And for our upper bound, we need to make sure that 6 is less than its parent. So its parent is 7 here, so we will set this to 7. So from this side of the um, tree, we are seeing that, okay, if we the way the recursion will work is it will go left, left, left. Um, so from this side of the tree, okay, now let's look at this 9 here. And for 9, we need to make sure that it is not... Um, greater than our root here, which is 8. So in order to do this, we need to set the threshold for the max here of 9 to 8, which was our previous max. So we need to make sure that we set this value over here to compare to 9, because this is part, this whole thing is part of the left subtree of 8. And as per our rules, the left subtree of a node contains only node with keys less than the node's key. So we need to set basically the last max value set here, which is the, the value of this child's um, parent's value. And we need to set that here. So this is the key um, sort of thing to understand from this problem, which can be a little bit tricky. So we are going to keep the max value as it is and set the previously set max value. So for, as per this condition, 9 is not less than 8. And therefore, we are going to return false from this side of the tree up here. So at the end, what will happen is when we're evaluating the final node that is 8, so from this side of the tree, it will get a um, check on the check left side, it will return a false because of this 9 here. And on the right side of the tree, it will return a true. However, because we have a false from the left side of the left subtree, the answer is going to be false. So this will get more clear when I write the code. So I will go ahead and jump into um, writing out the code. Awesome, so I'm back in the code and what I've done here is I've set the initial threshold. So the min value is negative inf and the max value here is inf. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write the base case, which is if root is none, then return true. Okay, um, now what we need to do is compare each value and make sure it is um, greater than the min and less than the max. And if this is not correct, then we need to return false. So I will say if root.val is greater than or equal to min val, which should not happen, um, or root.val is Sorry, if root.val is less than or equal to min, because we're writing what should return false, so if it is less than or equal to the min value, or if root.val is greater than equal or equal to the max value, okay? So if this is the case, then we need to return false. Okay, um, next thing what we need to do is check the left side and the right side of each node. So we're going to check each of the subtree. So the easiest way to do this is using recursion. So what I will do is I will uh, create this variable check, we can call it check left. So this is responsible to check the left side of each node. Okay, so we will say um, check left is we're going to call is valid. So we're basically checking is the left subtree valid or not. So we'll say is valid BST, check left. So is valid BST, and we will pass in the roots left. So root dot left. And we are going to um, update. So we will keep the min value as is. So the min value is going to be the previous set previously set min value, which in this case we can say it was negative inf here. So we we do not need to update the min value here. So we'll say that let the min value be the previously set min value. 
However, we do need to update the max value here to make sure that the current node is um, less than that max value. So we will say, okay, so if um, I'm at seven and I'm checking root.left, um, I need to make sure that seven is the max value for the six here. So we will update that max value to the current roots value, so root.val. So this is kind of the tricky part of um, manipulating the variables to make sure that our thresholds are set correctly from both the left and the right side. So when I say check right here, um, I will call, oh, this should be self, so self. Dot. So this will be self dot is valid. BST, and we are not going to um, interrogate the right side. So we'll say root dot right, and um, here we do need to update um, the min value. So here, from the perspective of seven, um, when doing these kind of questions, I find it easier to just look at perspective of one node. So from the perspective of seven, um, we need to make sure that our min value here um, is 7. So we need to make sure that, hey, okay, 9 is greater than our min value 7 when we're looking at the right side because holistically the idea is the right side of the node should be greater. So when we're looking from perspective of 7, we can say, okay, I need to update the root the min value to root dot value and we are going to leave the max value to the previous set max value. So what this does is we can see that this eight was the previous set max value here. And this eight is going to be updated here in the left side. So this is how we are making sure that holistically the subtrees max value is still eight which was the previously set max value okay and lastly what we need to do is um, we need to return um, so we are going to return the intersection of these two so if the check left is um, return true so we'll say if check left and check right if they both return true that means um, it has passed as a valid BST. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so this is correct. And submit. Okay, awesome, accepted. 